And I welcome back. My name is Givasun Maina. I'm one on one with Atul Singh, founder, CEO, and editor in chief, Fair Observer. We'll talk much about a fair observer when we come to conclude our discussion. But now let's go into US campaigns. Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Who is going to become the winner? Who is is Hillary Clinton going to become the first woman president in the history of US politics? And the Brexit, of course. At all. Yes. Trump. <laughs> this man is going to win. I think, I think also the Indians fear yeah. Trump. I, I is that think, the reason? Yeah. I think uh, most of the world shudders in horror at Trump. Uh, and, and the reason is uh, he is a lunatic in more ways than is one. He? I mean, he is. I mean, look at what he says. Mexicans are rapists, uh, uh, you know, throws the water here and there. Um, he's exceedingly misogynistic, his comments on women. Um, he lies through his teeth again and again and again. But he has said so many important things, like building a wall, Mexico border. He this guy is, build it. This guys are, are transporting a lot of drugs from Mexico. He is going to prevent that. He also he, said. He cannot build. He also it. said it's, it's, it's simply too expensive. Are you telling me that they will build a great wall of America he just also like said, the great wall of China? He also said he's going to bomb all the Al Shabaab plus all the. Well, he the, says a lot. The the ISIS, is, let's, he's going let's, to bomb the whole of Syria let, let, and bring the end so, to the problem of okay, let's, terrorists. Let's take a step back. Trump says whatever comes to his mind without thinking. Is he an impressive campaigner? Yes. Is he someone who has been pretty good at building a brand? Sure. Is he pretty good at marketing in America? Yes, uh, yeah. he had a reality TV. Yeah, he was show. a star, TV star. Yeah, so Trump is not to be underestimated. He's a classic example of someone who's cunning, very street smart, and knows how to get rich. Mind you, he also got... He's a billionaire. Yeah, he also got... We, that's what he says, we don't know. Yeah. We haven't, you know, we, we haven't seen his taxes yet. But the point is that uh, he also inherited money. Let's not forget it. But, but the main point is he's unfit to Three be president. Planet. But again, let's not focus on Trump. The reason someone as ludicrous as Trump is rising is because America's political elite has failed its people. Today, let's say if you were living in America, um, you were a journalist, chances are you wouldn't have a job. Yeah. You'd be working in public relations because there are no jobs left in journalism. Similarly, if you were working in a car factory, well, car factories have been shutting down and robots have come in and now artificial intelligence is coming. So there are very few jobs. So unless you can code for Facebook, uh, you can either be a yoga teacher or offer, you know, massages, become a masseur or, you know, um, uh, clean cars. So there are very few well-paying jobs at the same time. Um, the prices of assets have been rising because of quantitative easing. Americans are printing a lot of dollars, yeah. which means that if you own shares in Facebook or Google or, um, you know, uh, own houses in New York or California, then you get richer and richer. Uh, but if you don't, then you're left high and dry. So inequality has shot up. Price of, uh, you know, education has shot up. Price of healthcare has shot up. Life in America is no longer easy. Now Hillary Clinton. So, so the people are angry and that anger has given rise to Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton. Is this the first, well, uh, first woman president in the US? Are we going to have Clint Clinton as the first woman president in the US? Don't know. Really what is the probability? Uh, hard for me to, to give you a probability. She is certainly the favorite, yeah. but she could lose because remember, um, Hillary Clinton uh, is a divisive figure. Her supporters say, look at Hillary, she has so much experience, she has a track record, and she um, has done so much public service, therefore she deserves to be president. And she's a woman, therefore she should be president. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are very uncomfortable with her exceedingly cozy relationship with Wall Street, her lying over the years. Hillary also likes the private to mails. Tea. Pardon me? The private mails. Well, the private emails is just one of the many things, right? Uh, and people are uneasy about dynasties. A lot of people are uneasy. I know um, my friends are uneasy about dynasties, even though they are going to vote 
Some of them are going to vote for Hillary. Some of them are not going to vote. But look, Obama is campaigning for her. Yes, of course, because she's the lesser and of And he has a large people. audience. Yes, but uh, people are also angry. And uh, he may campaign for her and she may win, but uh, you don't know. And just this strike in New York, terrorist strike, every terrorist strike. Yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. There was an explosion fear. in New York. Correct. Creates yeah. fear. And fear is Donald Trump's best ally. He's feeding off fear. And uh, will Hillary be the f first woman president? Well, there will be a woman president. America is late to the party. There are so many countries that have had women heads of state. I mean, Britain has its second British, uh, sorry, second female prime minister. It has a queen too. Uh, India has had female prime ministers, or at least one. Um, there are other countries that, that have them. So the U.S. will eventually catch on. Um, and the U.S. Uh, is facing such a deep division that chances at the moment are iffy for, for Hillary, even though she's the favorite, because the public would just swing and vote in anger for Donald Trump. I hope he doesn't win, um, but I have no enthusiasm at all for Hillary Clinton. So, yeah, you know, um, the kind of uh, emotion people felt for Barack Obama, uh, who came as a breath of fresh air, and yes, some people got disappointed, but he was cleverer, he was more articulate, he was more eloquent, he was more thoughtful, um, and uh, he was uh, someone who was uh, making his own mark, not coming from uh, an established family. Yes, Clinton made his own mark, but now the now the Clintons have replaced the Kennedys as the dominant family of the Democratic Party. And it's a semi-monarchy. And a lot of people are very uneasy about it. Now, many, many people living outside, outside America, they, yeah. say, they say the Republicans are yeah. much fair to the people outside America than even the Democrats. A lot of people say that. My own countrymen say that. In fact, a lot of uh, Indians prefer to have Republicans than Democrats. in Washington, D.C. than Democrats. In fact... Uh, um, uh, they said that Democrats are very preachy. They tend to preach to other countries. Did, Ob this, did, did, Obama, did Obama correct, correct that, that perception? I think Obama has been a, an exceptional president when it comes to foreign policy. Yes, he made some mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. So yeah. I'm not going to dwell on them because you have people dwelling on his mistakes a lot, um, especially on American media. But um, he's made peace uh, with Iran a nuclear deal with Iran, yeah. with Cuba. There's a peace deal in Colombia. I mean, he's buried the hatchet with so many different countries. He has um, uh, largely led a conciliatory foreign policy. He has continued uh, um, George W. Bush's rapprochement with India. Um, he, um, uh, he has good relations with Europe. Uh, and so I think uh, uh, under Obama, Democrats have, uh, um, have uh, fared better in their foreign policy. But remember, here's one thing, and this is important, um, is that a lot of people uh, view Obama as Obama, not as a Democrat. Yeah. And that is... As an individual. Yeah, because he's so different from everyone else. I mean, he's the first colored man to be president of the U.S. and the rest of the world remembers that this is a country that had segregation not too long ago. Yeah. <clears throat> now, a point related to that. Yeah. Africans, the whites in the U.S., mm -hmm. why is it that when I walk around the streets of Chicago as uh -huh. a black, yes. I walk in fear? Uh, They're shooting the blacks. Yes. Um, militarization of police has happened. Uh, uh, the uh, war on drugs, which Reagan really began, in, actually Nixon began, and Reagan continued in right earnest, which was continued and pushed by Bill Clinton. In fact, I jokingly call Bill Clinton um, uh, the illegitimate political child of Ronald Reagan. Oh. <laughs> really? So, yes, because in terms of his policies, his charm. You're not afraid. I'm not afraid uh, at all. Uh, and the reason is this, is that in terms of his charm, uh, he is charming to people from all races, but in terms of his policies, they did hurt the vulnerable the most. I don't think he intended to, but that was the outcome. And, um, you know, you look, he continued uh, the shift of the Democrat Party. Let's get tough on crime. Let's liberalize um, fi uh, the financial sector completely. He 
uh, got someone from Goldman Sachs to become Treasury Secretary. And Goldman Sachs and, and, and uh, uh, Washington DC have developed an incestuous relationship that is deeply unsavory. Concentration of power is a bad thing, whether it happens in the Pope or whether it happens in the president or whether it happens on Wall Street. And under Clinton, there has been, there was a certain concentration of power. Uh, so um, I, I, I think, um, I think that, um, uh, that uh, uh, what you're seeing with African Americans um, is that there was a war waged on poverty, really, and a war on drugs, really. Um, um, uh, uh, fines, and if you miss fines, you go to jail, this get tough on crime. And, and now, um, uh, accompanied with the militarization of police that happened a long while ago, but really accentuated after the war on terror under George Bush, um, African American men are getting shot at on a regular basis. Now with cell phone technology, it's out in the news, but still the deeper issues still lie unaddressed. Are you from that Brexit? <clears throat> Briefly, Brexit. Is Britain going to stand alone? It seems uh, that uh, they might have to. They are in limbo, they voted for it, or they will have to have another referendum and leave. Britain has always had an ambivalent relationship with Europe. Remember, Scotland was Presbyterian, meaning that they adopted John Calvin's, you know, um, um, Christianity. England, after Henry VIII decided that he wanted a new hot young wife called Anne Boleyn, had the Church of England, and the Queen is still head of the Church of England. Uh, although, ironically, there are more Catholics in England now than, um, than uh, Church of England goes. Or, or, uh, Another break. When you come back, <laughs> we talk about the Fair Observer. This guy has written a lot, a lot much more in the Fair Observer. Criticizing government, criticizing leadership, talking much more things. And when you come back, we're going to make a conclusion out of that. Don't go away.